What's up guys, Aaron Productions here, and today we're going to be doing our video I've wanted to do for a long time, and that is how to link a conventional and addressable fire alarm control panel. So, as you can see here on the left, we have my MS-10UD, and then on the right we have my MS-9050UD. So, if you're wondering how I wired this up, um, it's actually pretty simple if you know how it works. So... Uh, since I only have it set up for trouble and fire, we have um, one relay set to um, alarm relay and one set to a trouble relay. So there's an alarm and trouble relay in this panel as well. Um, I, I wasn't able to put the resistors on this one because of the way I had it wired. But this one has the resistors on here. And uh, as you can see, it goes to the common and the normally open. And it basically closes the contact whenever the trouble pops up on here, it'll cause the trouble over here. An alarm will cause an alarm over here, which will make both of the NACs activate. And basically, if you had one annunciator on here or something, then you could tell what's going on. Unfortunately, you can't like silence it with this one or something. If you had an MS-10UD, you could um, have silence switch and reset switch and acknowledge switch and make your own annunciator or something like that. But then you would use up all your zones. But it's very simple how to do it. So I'm going to go over here to my diagram, which I drew. So on the, here, we have the MS-10UD, which has fire and trouble relay. And zone one and zone two are what um, I'm going to be using for the demonstration. Now we have my 9050UD over here, which is addressable. So we have an SLC besides zones. So we have a dual monitor module. So you can see it double polling in there for each two addresses. So there's two zones in here basically. And then we have the fire and trouble relay here. So um, we'll set this zone to be a fire type thing. Can't write like this, but, and this one will be a trouble. It will be set to some sort of supervisory. I have these set to supervisory so that they won't activate another, one another when they do the thing. You would have to have um, supervisory in a real situation, obviously, but that's just for demonstration, and it works. So, um, fire. So, the common will go to either the positive or the negative. It doesn't matter. And then this will go to the normally open, which means it'll be off in a normal condition. And then right here, you have your resistor. Same thing over here with the resistor. Then that runs into here, and that runs into there. So that's, now this um, panel will be activated by the 9050. So now we gotta work on activating this panel with the MS-10UD. So that wires up the same way, it goes like that, so normally open. Uh oh, well, I went too far with that one. But, goes into the common and the normally opens. And then we have our resistors at the end. So it's actually pretty simple, but it's uh, so a relay is just like a switch. So that's basically how that works. So now I could give a little demonstration on how this works. So now I will activate this panel, which all of these are disabled the max. So if I pull this panel, a few seconds later, this panel will also go into a fire alarm. The module is activated now. So, it doesn't matter in this case which way you reset it, but obviously reset the device that's activated and then reset both panels at a similar time. So, there's that. So, now the panel's resetting. This will take a second, so I'll be back. Okay, so now both panels are reset. So, um, I'll move this up so you can see the module there. But now I'm going to pull the BG-8, or actually I'll press my... Or I'll pull the fake BG12. And you'll see this panel activate, the module activate, and then this will activate. So, silence so these. Now we'll reset the pull station that I pulled, or smoke detector, whatever it may be. Okay. There we go. And now we can reset both panels. So since it's pretty much impossible for me to just pull these out, I'm going to pull out my NAC1 
wiring here and you'll see this panel go into trouble module we'll activate for the trouble portion and then I'll send this panel into supervisory okay so now our panel is reset so I'll pull out the terminal block panel will go into trouble with knack one fault or two and then this also will activate with the supervisory now since this is a supervisory and there's no supervisory connected that means that there is um, no back feeding here so that this will go into trouble that not will go back into trouble and then that'll say it's in trouble and it's just a pain um, but the alarm it will piggyback but it's not that big of a pain because um, when these do reset they do pop up with a trouble since I'm using the battery hack on these where you put the positive into here I had to use the a and n buses because those don't reset But obviously you wouldn't be using the battery hack at all in a real situation, so that doesn't apply. But, um, yeah, this is basically it, guys. It's pretty simple once you figure out how to use relays and how adjustable control, mo um, sorry, monitor modules work. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know it was a little short, but there's not really much to talk about. And you'll be seeing this in future videos. And hopefully I'll have some link system tests. Obviously you could use these separate. If one panel's off or something. It won't affect the operation. Because the relay, relay won't be activated or anything. But that's going to be it for this video guys. Thanks for watching. Peace out.